Okay, hi everybody. It's uh, good to connect with you uh, folks. I've been away for a bit. Uh, been off to Ontario on a, a holiday and then my dad passed away. And so, uh, you know, we were in Kelowna with the memorial and that sort of thing. But now we're back here in Campbell River. I've uh, been able to spend some time praying once again and the Lord talking to me. And, and I want to be uh, sharing some of those things. And today I want to talk about what's going on in the United States because, of course, it affects the whole world. But, you know, it's such a crazy, nutty upheaval that's going on there. You might be going, what on earth is happening? How do you understand it? What does it mean? And all of this. Um, but, uh, you know, we just, we just had last weekend these murders several places. I think Ohio, Texas, uh, Walmart, you know, mass shootings, dozens of people dead, all this stuff going on. What on earth is going on, you might say. And, and I want you to understand something. Uh, the spirit of anarchy has been released in the United States. And I'm not saying that because I see it happening now. And people are starting to use the word anarchy, uh, like the Democrats and all that. I mean, there are, there are pro-anarchy groups on the left now. And it looks like the Democrats, you know, and the socialists, all that, they want a revolution, pretty much, of what's going on. But um, I'm not saying it because we're seeing it. I'm saying it because uh, a number of years ago, I had a revelation of it when it arrived. I haven't shared this before, um, but here's what happened. Uh, I was praying, you know, praying for uh, the government and the United States, different things. And this was back in the days of Obama. And suddenly I had a vision and I saw the uh, United States and down in the southeast, like, I don't know, Georgia, Alabama, that area, uh, I saw something going on and the Lord said to me, the spirit of anarchy has been released in America. That was the words. The spirit of anarchy has been released in America. What does that mean, the spirit of anarchy? It, it, it doesn't mean just the attitude and everything. It means uh, demonic power principalities have been released into the United States of America back then, started, that are anarchy. They had been prevented before, but now they're underway now. And they've been heating up. People have been influenced by it. The media is controlled by it. Democrats are controlled by it, left wing, it's just gone heating up and up and up and up and up. The devil power of anarchy. Now, I want to talk about what to do about this, uh, you know, for any of our American friends watching. And by the way, thank you for all the subscribers. Pass it on. Pass this message on. Um, but, uh, you know, I, I was looking here at something Mario Morello sent out, like the, the, uh, the Democrat Democrats have basically drunk the Kool-Aid, you know, they're, they're all out, left-wing, socialist, pretty much advocating the overthrow um, uh, of America, the overthrow of the president, uh, death to the, they're not saying it, but there's groups that are calling for the death of the president again and again. All this stuff's going on, it's getting louder and louder. Here's what Mary Morella said uh, about the debates that are going out on right now, the Democratic debates, basically they've sold out to uh, this whole radical socialism. He says, today they revealed their true identity. Uh, and what is it? And he quotes, we are the Democrat Party. We are, uh, here's the quote, we are the party of masks, torches, bats, and knives. We are Antifa. That's what Antifa does. They're the, the, the hooded guys. Uh, they'll probably get declared to be a domestic terrorist organization, but they aren't yet. Um, now, I'm not sure who he's quoting or if he's just using that as a way to say it. He says, we are Antifa. We take our children to senators' houses and scream that they need to be stabbed in the heart. That's happening. Scream that they need to be stabbed in the heart. There's posters, there's billboards, you know, advocating uh, the murder of those wearing mega hats, making America great again hats. We are the party that will hack your private information, destroy your property if you support Trump. Our members have produced a movie that advocates the murder of anyone wearing a mega hat, uh, Make American Great Again hat. Um, that's what's going on. That, now that's a quote from Mario Morello. Uh, crazy. Now it, it's open anarchy that's underway. The spirit of anarchy is, is what is in back of what's going on in America. You know, people try to label it, but I'm telling you, God told me it was coming. 
number of years ago that it was arrived and now it's just hooked in. Now, what to, can uh, happen? Why is something like that happen? Why does something like this happen? It always comes into a nation or a family or a business or a church. Always, always the powers and spirits and powers gain access through entrenched sin. And it could be uh, idolatry, bloodshed, immorality, covenant breaking, those four you see all the time with Israel. They open doors uh, to the enemy coming and God allows it that way. Why? Because he wants his people to come back to him. He wants there to be a rush back to him. And so um, when people, when nations, when leaders sell themselves out to do evil and turn away from the Lord, the Lord lets evil overtake them until they become desperate enough to turn back to God. That's, that's how it works. And, and even in our personal life. Um, I can give you an example here. His David, he's secure as king. And in 2 Samuel 21, let me read a little bit of this. There was famine in the days of David for three years, year after year. And he sought the face of the Lord. And here's what the Lord said. There is blood guilt on Saul and on his house because he put the Gibeonites to death. Okay, so bloodshed, one of the four. There's blood guilt on Saul, who was king, and his house, all that belonged to the king, Saul, uh, because of the Gibeonites. So the king called the Gibeonites, and they uh, were not people of Israel, it says, but a remnant of the Amorites. And the Israelites had swore to spare them. Remember, they came, they pretended uh, they were from far away and tricked them, and then, then the Israelites took an oath. So here what we have is two things of the four. The breaking of a covenant and the blood guilt of murder came. And uh, in a zeal, Saul sought to slay them. And so David asked the Gibeonites, what will I do for you? How shall I make expiation? How shall we repair this, he's saying, this situation, which is causing a famine? You say, how can sin cause a famine? It's just the way things work. If, you, if you're a Bible reader, you get it. Okay, and, and so that's, <laughs> that's what it is. And they said, it's not a matter of money. It's not a matter of silver or gold between us or Saul or his house or to put anyone to death in Israel. It's, it's not that. He said, so what do you want me to do for you, said King David. And they said, the man who consumed us and planned to destroy us so that we should have no place in the territory of Israel, let seven of his sons be given to us that we hang them up before the Lord in Gibeon on the mountain of the Lord. And the king said, I'll give them to you. So what they wanted was blood for blood. They, they uh, the blood of the execution of Saul's family would cover the sin, they declared, that would cover the sin, expiate the sin. And, uh, and, and that would be well. So that's, that's, what, um, that's what David did. He went in and rounded up the, the sons, seven of the sons of Saul, uh, not Jonathan's son. There was a covenant with Jonathan. And, and, uh, and so he did that. They were hung before the Lord. And after that, it says in verse 14, the Lord heeded supplication for the land. After that was when the prayers of the righteous King David and other righteous people were heard. So here we have a situation where the wickedness of a previous ruler, Saul, the breaking of a covenant and bloodshed, brought bondage on the whole nation, spiritually caused famine, a drought, so that there would be no rain. And when that was dealt with, uh, then... God heard the prayers for the needs and, the, and, and the, the drought broke, the famine broke, okay? There's something in back of the anarchy that roots back in the previous leaders, uh, Obama, but previous presidents and, and their like. Something that's back from their time and before. Something that's rooted in the history of the U.S. that has allowed anarchy to come, okay? So we... How would you do? You've got to seek the Lord. So, um, and then the interesting part of this, and we'll get to this in a minute, was after that, it talks about the same chapter, 21, Samuel 2, uh, 2 Samuel 21. He starts to have victory after victory against the giants that have been attacking the land. So not only does the drought end, 
But then he gets victories over all the giants that have been oppressing the land of Israel. Wow. Tells us something that's going on. So what, what can we say about this? Let me give you some clues. One is sin is always the cause. Something in back of it. The answer is not political. The answer is to, to inquire of the Lord. You church, you leaders, Christian leaders of the United States, inquire of the Lord. What's in back of the spirit of anarchy? What released it? What is the sin in the nation and the leaders that released anarchy into our land? I, I don't have, I maybe have some ideas. I don't have any answers, but the Lord will give the answer. This is a spirit of anarchy, and it's being named now. It's starting to be said now. Anarchy. Those that want anarchy. Those, isn't, there's no mistake that our culture has been, you know, the sons of anarchy and zombies and zombie apocalypse and all the, uh, you know, now we're seeing the zombies that are all glazed out going to destroy America, right? Yeah, you got to get it. See, the movies and the games and all that are sometimes secular prophetic voices. So, one, it's always sin. Adultery, bloodshed, immorality, covenant breaking. Two, it's, uh, can be, need to inquire of the Lord. When you find out, three, a repentance. Four, restitution and action. That was the repentance was, and reaction was when King David gave uh, the Gibeonites, the seven sons of Saul. We have the blood of Jesus if there's repentance. I'm convinced it roots back to the church, ultimately. Because we're the people who represent God in the land, right? And when they pray, finally, they have their answers. The giants are overthrown in the land. There's giants in the land, giants in the world right now. And, uh, and victory will come down the United States if the people of God begin to deal with the root cause of the release of the spirit of anarchy. Okay, so there, I'm, I'm just giving that to you guys. I know most of you are Canadian, uh, but we need to be wise and understand the times and what goes on. Things are not surface level. Things don't happen in the nation just because of a surface level of politics and opinion. Uh-uh, there's a whole lot deeper stuff because God is the Lord, okay? So let's pray. Father, we bless America. We bless Donald Trump. We bless that country to resolve, and especially the church in Jesus' name, to resolve the issues that are brought in the spirit of anarchy. Lord, begin to give those leaders revelation of it. Not just say it, not just name it, not just talk about it, not just do politics, God, but begin to go after and deal with the root causes that you will hear and answer prayer for the nation to be settled. In Jesus' name, thank you, God, because you're king of the nations. Amen. And uh, you know what? That, that, that's just an American message, really. But uh, Canada, we have our own set of things. God bless you guys. Thank you for subscribing to my channel. And by the way, um, I've also uh, copied our YouTube channel over to BitChute, B-I-T-C-H-U-T-E. Uh, in case, you know, YouTube, owned by Google, cuts us off. It's all there on BitChute. Look for Total Change, Terry Somerville. God bless you.